for all those of you who are still wondering what is silent dehydration we're going to be explaining this to you it is not something to be taken lightly first before we take it lightly or strongly we have to understand that something called a silent dehydration exists we have to understand what exactly is it so let me begin by asking dr ravinder reddy what exactly is silent dehydration what are your observations on silent dehydration in your own clinical practice uh, thank you very much and uh, good good afternoon ladies and gentlemen uh, please uh, forgive the gruffiness or the hoarseness in my voice i'm just recovering from a silent dehydration you know, that's why i keep drinking water you yourself are recovering from silent dehydration yes my uh, goodness please carry on sir and please you. take care of yourself thank you very much now in uh, in the immediate past we just had a fascinating session on artificial uh, nutrition and from there we have taken a uh, literally an opposite view to the basic intelligence what we heard was artificial intelligence and now it's basic intelligence we all know what is advanced intelligence is that is the care of the patient the therapy of the patient but what is basic intelligence is what is a clear and a present danger in most of the human beings as well as in 90% to 95% of the individuals who are unwell like me at this moment recovering now uh, we have an element of silent dehydration now to explain this further just like planet earth planet earth 70% of the surface of planet earth is made up of water we all know that right similarly 70 to 80% of human beings we 70 to 80% of the weight of the human beings is actually made up of water 70 to 80% in an immediate newborn Uh, to about 70% um, uh, in adults i weigh about 70 kg uh, which is an average uh, dude and i have about 40 to 45 kg of water in me and to maintain this daily i need to take 2 and 1/2 to 3 liters of water and i excrete not exactly the same amount but reasonably good amount to maintain a balance now when there is a situation where the amount of fluid in the body is less than what it should be then that is under hydration which is a more correct term uh, but very commonly it is known as dehydration now there are many many tests to actually develop to diagnose dehydration but a silent dehydration i've used the two or three terms named after very famous clear and present danger and that's what it is most of the individuals who are unwell have an element of silent dehydration and are there any specific test to diagnose it no they absolutely no but what is important is once again i come down to the way i open my statement is the basic intelligence we need to understand that every individual who is unwell has an element of silent dehydration let me talk about illnesses first so it could be an overt illness such as you name it all the metabolic illnesses or an infectious illnesses most of them it's quite often that they have uh, increased utilization of water uh, because water is one of the main things which we all need to get the entire system in us uh, up and going about in whenever we are unwell this particular system takes a big meeting uh, one of the main reasons is we have uh, due to many reasons i'll not go into that our intake is less Uh, we swallow less due to due to altered perception of our taste or non availability or just we are too lazy to walk up to the kitchen or to the refrigerator to drink or more commonly in the elderly or in the infirm is where they do not have adequate caregivers or more importantly patients who are having caregivers but they are not aware to actually be mindful of the water intake of these individuals now this is what is silent dehydration the commonest uh, clinical manifestation if i if i should use the word clinical is actually lethargy weakness uh, you know that is silent rehydration uh, if i find a 10 uh, 10 or a 100 rupee or a 50 rupee note down and i get up and pick it up i am surely having silent rehydration but if I'm, if there is the same amount of uh, note fallen down and I, i could be least bothered to get up and that means i am having an over dehydration most of us get up and pick up the note isn't it that means we do have a silent dehydration coming back to the in, uh, silent dehydration in normal such as you and me is the is the environmental climate 
right now we are in the midst of uh, july we are in the midst of olympics and as we all know there's an ongoing raging heat wave going on in paris and and uh, i was reading an article recently what is the most commonest intake where all these athletes from various countries are having they are actually frequently sipping water to avoid the silent dehydration in other words we do not need to be exposed to the harsh sunlight as we see in hyderabad in in the months of summer even being indoors itself we actually lose adequate amount of water right from our skin transpiration it could be hidden transpiration it could be overt or very clear that is perspiration or sweat it could be the very way a person is breathing very rapidly each time we breathe in like that the water actually the the temperature depending on the environmental temperature is either hot or too cold it is the sinuses that actually utilize the water vapor in there and uh, you know make it conceivable to the body in other words we are utilizing water there so we lose water there so it's not just an inadequate oral intake but the environmental temperature the last thing is the uh, medications there are quite a few medications that actually cause a uh, loss of water uh, the commonest one we all know is actually the uh, are the diuretics and they are very rampantly used right left and center because we ladies and gentlemen have the uh, duality of not only having the illnesses of the poor but also the illnesses of the rich in other words the metabolic illnesses are so high especially the cardiac and the cardiovascular and the renal the chronic kidney disease that our uh, the, the doctors actually put a moratorium on the amount of water we we take in and we do and we say that okay if you got cardiac failure you need to take only i say a liter of water per day or not more than that sometimes even less now the person is not mindful or not educated to actually tell them the it depends on the environment as such if you are in an air conditioned environment it's fine but if you are in a hot and a humid condition which most of us are in india right that reduction of 750 ml will actually lead to more silent dehydration so silent dehydration is some is something which is clear and present and the com and why are we more concerned about this much is because it certainly delays the recovery of an individual from whatever he or she is suffering from okay okay that's uh, dr reddy on what exactly silent dehydration dr harshad uh, i have to ask you you know we have an idea of now what is silent dehydration in so called non diarrheal uh, cases but uh, you know you can probably now talk to us about the concept of fee in treating silent dehydration um if i may fee stands for fluids electrolytes and energy doesn't it dr harshad exactly so uh, good afternoon everyone as uh, sir has rightly pointed out right silent dehydration exists and exists with all of us in non diarrheal conditions so dehydration with diarrhea is different silent dehydration in non diarrheal condition is entirely a different entity and as uh, anchor is rightly mentioned right the fluid electrolyte and energy now uh, dr reddy has already mentioned we need fluids but along with fluids we also need electrolytes to facilitate the absorption of fluids but the absorption of water or fluids is not only facilitated by electrolytes it also needs some amount of glucose in the body okay there are sglt2 receptors present on kidney which facilitate the absorption of water so energy also plays a very important role in body all of us do a lot of day to day activities which need energy what happen particularly when it comes to illnesses our basal metabolic rate goes high so energy requirements are already on a higher side but at the same time when you are ill you have poor appetite so as it is you are not eating well so on one side the energy demands are high on other sides you are not eating well that leads to something called as energy deficits so in these illnesses you need to address the energy deficits as well so only fluid electrolyte doesn't give you a impact on recovery from these illnesses it has to be coupled with some amount of energy to address fee that is fluid electrolyte and energy deficits so that the recovery from these non diarrheal conditions will be much faster now energy what ideal form of energy all of us very well understand carbohydrates are the most important source of energy for our body naturally the carbohydrates 
are utilized by our body for energy purposes. If carbs are not used, it will lead to utilization of other resources like fats and proteins, which may lead to formation of certain toxin products like ketone bodies. So preferably, carbs are the source of energy. Nonetheless, as I mentioned, in non-diarrheal dehydration, coupled with energy deficit, fluid, electrolytes, and energy has to be supplemented for holistic recovery of the patient. Okay, quick question before we wrap up to both of you. Usually when there is this dehydration, people say, pani pilo. You know, but silent dehydration means that you don't even know when you're dehydrated. You know, can you preemptively drink water or is water just enough to deal with silent dehydration? Uh, it's a very practical question. So, well, let me give you an example. Whenever, whenever we are exposed to the harsh summer weather or when we are really thirsty, which means that we are actually very significantly dehydrated uh, because our thirst receptors are stimulated and it tells our, uh, uh, the front part of our brain called thalamus that, hey, I need to drink some water. So what do we do? We take a huge chug of wa huge water bottle and straight away uh, we chuck the whole uh, liter of bottle down, right? Thinking that we have corrected our dehydration. Probably it will only satisfy the dry mouth. To a significant extent, it will satisfy the incidence of rehydration by 30, 40, maybe 45% at the most. But to correct the dehydration, we need to constantly keep drinking water, depending on whether even in healthy individuals. Uh, again, I come back to the, the normal intake of water in us is about 2.5 to 3 liters in 24 hours, provided we are in a normal temperature such as what we are experiencing right now. But, but in case we are exposed to harsher one, we in fact, incidentally, we live in a very semi-arid area of the world, so you need to constantly keep checking in water uh, we, every time we drink water doesn't mean that we need to have salt and sugar as such. Uh, unless in some individuals who are having an extreme sense of vomiting or diarrhea or uh, um, as Dr. Harshad has said, Ill no illness like fever and other things, in them we need to add the electrolytes and energy. Otherwise simple water in most of us who are not uh, hospitalized, who are not suffering from any ailment should suffice. Okay. The other part is, I'm just taking a few more minutes, the other part is in case we are unwell, right, pure water is not sufficient. We need to be mindful of the amount of calories we take. Remember 25, it's a very simple number to actually remember, 25 ml per kilogram per day. If somebody is 50, I leave the calculation uh, to you all. Similarly, 25 kilocalories per kilogram per day, and we can calculate how many calories Nowadays, we are having smartphones that actually will calculate whatever we are imbibing. This is for people who are fortunate enough to have one, but I'm just giving you an idea of the importance to reiterate the importance that not just fluids, but electrolytes and uh, energy too are essential to have it constantly, frequently, consistently the whole day. Rashid, you want to make a quick point? Yeah. So a uh, quick uh, part on this, as uh, Dr. Reddy mentioned, right, the fluid electrolyte energy is important. This is not something uh, which is there uh, we talking about. It is scientifically backed, it is evidence-based. A recent consensus recommendations from Indian expert panel, recently a consensus recommendation got published in Journal of Association of Physicians of India. The expert recommend that fluid electrolyte energy formulations to be started from day one of non-diarrheal illnesses to have the impact on recovery from them. So, the FE formulation, preferably the ready to drink formulation to be started because there is a known concentration of fluid electrolyte and energy in these formats. That's why they are to be preferred and to be started from day one of the illness to have an impact on recovery from these illnesses. Okay. Fascinating. I'm afraid uh, we have completely run out of time here on this conversation. I'm going to ask the audience to give a big round of applause to both the, the Dr. Reddy and Dr. Harshad for helping us understand something that we never thought existed in the first place. Thank you so much for telling us what it is and how to tackle it. Thank you so much. Because this patient may not complain initially unless you probe and then once the doctor realizes that uh, he is not taking adequate fluids, it may be late. So uh, they may just complain on giddiness, headache and all, it could be part of any viral fever. So suddenly they will not realize and then that is the main problem. Especially the children below 5 years and above 60 years age group, 
they are more vulnerable because of excessive fluid loss and uh, suddenly they can go into dehydration like uh, becoming dizzy and then suddenly syncopal attack may be there blood pressure may fall down so these risks are there uh, urine output will come down and kidneys may get damaged also normally we we do dehydration classification as some dehydration severe dehydration no dehydration if simple dehydration is not there we label them as no dehydration we give only ors fluids and other things whereas in some dehydration some dehydration means the patient or child will not be able to take orally that's why we have to replace this some dehydration and severe dehydration cases with iv fluids or uh, sips of ors ors fluids and other uh, liquids but silent dehydration most of the people doesn't know what is silent dehydration this concept came in these 2 3 years what is silent dehydration silent dehydration is normally seen in viral fevers bacterial fevers including typhoid what happens is the child children will not be able to take complete fluids or appetite diet because appetite will be very less in the infections so the recovery phase where it is there it will take huge time to 10 days 15 days to take the recovery but if this silent dehydration is treated very well early what happens is the recovery will be very fast so real silent dehydration is normally if you see that electrolyte imbalance will be there glucose imbalance will be there in the dehydration magne magnesium deficiency calcium deficiency will be there but in this silent dehydration what happens is you will not be able to detect the uh, diagnosis the health risk associated with this silent dehydration is first and foremost thing the recovery from the primary disease is delayed the patient doesn't recover as expected another thing if it is not uh, taken uh, care in the early stages this might lead to severe dehydration which might require admission in the hospital and treatment with iv fluids and all so early recognition early treatment is the funda when you are dealing with silent dehydration as a pioneer in this therapy area we are advancing science of non diarrheal dehydration with both publications as well as educational initiatives very recently in uh, the month of january at association of physicians of india conference 2024 which is a flagship conference for internal medicine physicians we launch one clinical practice recommendations which were based on delphi consensus methodology created for recommendations of oral fluid electrolytes and energy in hospitalized patients particularly it was focusing on dehydration which occurs in hospitalized patient wherein how to use oral fluid electrolyte and energy recommendations to address the needs in these patients orsel which is there to address the hydration needs for non diarrheal dehydration now when it comes to orsel it is a scientifically formulated brand recommended by hcps to replenish the fluid electrolyte and energy requirements in patients with non diarrheal dehydration where we found that orsel helps the patient to get hydrated and uh, energized in as early as 20 minutes so almost uh, 40% of the patient got energized or hydrated in span of 20 minutes fluids electrolytes and energy one of the fundamentals when we are dealing with dehydration so not only recommended fluids if simple if an if you're dealing with an elderly patient tell him to have some extra amount of or a bottle of extra water would deal with that one tell any patient children as well as middle age tell them or diabetic patients i tell them to have excess fluid intake when they are having any viral fever with some good energy drinks as well as uh, proper replication of electrolytes because these definitely helps in a fast recovery of the patients fluids plays an important role when we are not only dealing with any viral illnesses but some component of dehydration if addressed early definitely the recovery would also be very fast the dakshin healthcare summit 2024 was all about healthcare and how technology is going to shape healthcare in the future years and you had doctors from across fields of medicine come together to have dialogues and raise awareness on a platform hosted by tv9 network in partnership with south first thank you so much for watching